I want to talk to you guys today about 42 footers and specifically one boat that I've had the pleasure of getting to know recently, the Beneteau 423. But to do that properly, I'll have to tell you why you might not buy one because it has some serious competition. Out of the gate, let me tell you what we're looking at today. The 423 is a mid-2000s 42-footer that you can find just about anywhere and at any time. And if you look hard enough, it even came in a gorgeous dark blue color that I can say from personal experience is absolutely beautiful. The average price on these is about 134,000 US dollars today. And for a cruising boat that does what this one does, that's about right on the money. And while this boat isn't perfect, it gives you a lot. We're gonna to talk to an owner today too, so stay tuned for that. Some quick specs, the 423 is 19,500 pounds, right on the 20,000 pound target for my personal ideal Caribbean weight class. 13 foot beam, five and a half foot draft. But here's the money. The tanks in this boat are huge. 53 gallons of fuel and 154 of water. Maybe that's not huge by long range cruising standards, but they're big. The boat also gives us a galley we can use at sea because it's sort of boxed in and it's hard to fall over in while the boat's healing. And unlike some other 42s, the owner's cabin is up front. In the back, we do get a good size bed, but most owners say that it's tight back here with two people. So they prefer to sleep in the V berth, which is very nice anyway, although it can be bouncy at anchor. Inside, we get loads of space for entertaining or lounging around with comfortable seating throughout and a proper nav desk for charting or getting on the laptop if we're lucky enough to work from the boat. Rounding that out, we get two heads with factory air conditioning. This is a very nice boat to own. Out back, we get all the lines led aft on the coach top to a pair of big self tailors through a clutch system. The cockpit is fairly large and of note, this is one of the last 42 foot Benetos with a single helm. Just about everything after this boat is a twin. So if twin helms is important to you, you're going to need to up the budget a bit and buy something slightly newer. On deck, we get a solid vang leading up to a masthead sloop rig, nice clean decks leading to a double roller on the bow. And yes, these boats came with bow thrusters, a great 42 foot, very capable, fairly fast and extremely comfortable, but for a $134,000 price tag, other than not being a twin helm, there are two other reasons not to buy one. And the first, the first argument to this boat that has to come to mind for any cruiser shopping anywhere for a mid 2000s sugar scoop boat should always be, what about the Catalina 42 Mark II? This is the granddaddy of Caribbean cruising, a legend in its own right. And people love this boat. And given that it was designed 10 years before the Beneteau, it's actually aging very, very well. Because the Benny is a mid 2000s boat, we're only going to be looking at the newer fleet of Catalinas here. And the average price on them today is a whopping $167,500, a full 30 grand more than that Beneteau. So do we get $30,000 more boat? The Catalina is a thousand pounds heavier at 20,500, a foot wider, just shy of 14 feet. And the bow thruster was an option on these. So if you're looking for one, see if it has the bow thruster. I've docked the 42 Mark II without a thruster by myself and it's okay. The boat maneuvers well, but in a stiff crosswind or backing into a slip, I really wish I'd had it. It's less tankage too. The Benny had 53 fuel, 154 water. The Catalina makes do with 38 fuel, 138 water. That means more jerry cans on deck if you plan to go anywhere, but you'll have less draft doing it. The Benny's totally manageable in the Bahamas five and a half feet might be trumped by Catalina's five feet if you have to go anywhere that's super skinny. Inside these boats are pretty comparable. They're super spacious, they're two heads, factory AC available, but the Catalina gives us the option of a Pullman berth and people really seem to like these. The Pullman off to the port allows for the forepeak of the boat to be a huge head and it 
really is huge. I've showered in one of these and it's wonderful, albeit it's a bit bouncy if you're in a choppy anchorage, which is always a blast showering while the bathroom goes up and down several feet every 10 seconds or so. The Catalina also gives us a proper nav desk and a reasonably good galley we can use on a heel somewhat, but it's not as protected as the Benny. In the back, we get kind of the same thing the Benny gave us with this stateroom that's tight. Might be great for one person, but certainly for two, it would be a little small. Up on deck, we get the same arrangements with a sugar scoop walkthrough, a great cockpit, coach top line management, and self tailors. And on the side decks, both boats give us inboard jib tracks and shrouds terminating well in from the rail. The racer in me sees how high I can bring the jib when I need to climb. The cruiser in me sees how easy it is to run up to the bow in a hurry when the shrouds are inboard like this. I like both of these boats for that. The Catalina gives us the same double roller, a windlass, and anchor locker arrangement on the bow. At $30,000 more money for the same year boat, as much as I love the Catalina 42 Mark II, and I do, it's a legendary Caribbean cruising boat, I'm just not sure we're getting $30,000 more boat. And for me, I'd rather sleep on the Beneteau. Even the non-Pullman Catalina option, its V-berth is worse. If all things are equal here, I'm probably buying the better bed for less money. Don't forget while you're here to hit subscribe on this channel. It's all new and we're doing a new episode every Monday and Saturday. So if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified when one comes out. And speaking of beds, if the Catalina can't persuade me away from that Beneteau 423, maybe Beneteau's sister can. This is the Genoa Sun Odyssey 42 DS, DS standing for Deck Saloon, sort of. And if it came down to the beds between the last two boats, they're in trouble because what Genoa did here was actually give us a proper master stateroom in the back, an aft cabin, like it should be. And it's an island bed we can get in and out of from either side, but let's come back to that. This boat is also right on the money weight-wise at 19,700 and right in the middle of the other two beam-wise at 13.5. Draft is a five-foot keel with the more Mediterranean option of a seven-foot being available. She gets the same Yanmar 50 as her sister, bow thruster and factory AC available. On price, this runs about 166,000 in today's market average, but a whole lot harder to find than the Beneteau or the Catalina. Both of these show up everywhere, but this Genoa is a lot more scarce. If you can find one in good shape for the right price, you will have the best bed by far, but the smallest tanks, a measly 34 fuel and 94 water, weigh way less than the Benny and even less than the Catalina. So as pretty as this boat is, and for me, it's the prettiest of the three, it won't stay that way because you're going to be running jerry cans on the deck if you need to motor anywhere further than home. Inside, we're getting a little closer to that veneer feeling interior with this boat. Not all the way there yet, but closer. The galley is even less seagoing than the other two boats, but the space inside in this boat is its party piece. You get huge seating flanked by those massive windows. Remember, this is a DS deck saloon which it actually isn't. There's an argument that DS should be the saloon is level with the deck, so you shouldn't have to step down to come inside from the companionway. In this boat, you definitely have to step down, five huge steps down. So some might say this is not a real DS, but you do get those huge windows. The inside of these 42 DSs is a very, very nice place to be. If you had to have a downtown condo on the water, I'd have to say I'd take this boat in a heartbeat, but where the Benny was acceptable at an average price of 134, the legendary Catalina clocked in at 167. This comes in around that high too at 166, and it's significantly harder to find. But it is a twin helm. It does have electric winches everywhere, and it does have that bedroom. Long term cruising? Probably not. The tanks aren't enough. Entertaining the executive team? Absolutely. In all, the Beneteau is 30 grand cheaper than the other two. It's easier to find. Significantly bigger tankage. It's, dare I say, just as nice. I mean, it's not a twin helm and it doesn't have a downtown condo bedroom in the back, but as sailboats go that you actually use for long range stuff, for me, it's the clear winner.
So Jeanette, you have a 423 that you sail. You basically live on it during the summer. You've outfitted it. You've decorated it. It's been made very, very beautiful. I've seen pictures. It's wonderful. Um, and you came from a Do 434. Tell me about your boat and how that came to be. I love the Do 434. She sailed beautifully. But I was looking for a little bit more space, a lot more horsepower in my engine, and something also with a lot more headroom because I'm a tall woman. And so as I started looking around, it was COVID and I didn't have a lot of choice. I came across the 43, which was a little bigger than I wanted. I was ideally targeting something in the 38, 39 range. And it was beautiful. And I had some friends with the Beneteau 423 and I was talking to them. I took her for a sea trial and I went, mm, this is my boat. I'm going to love this boat. What's your favorite part about the boat? If you had to pick one thing. Well, this is a very female answer. I love the inside and I love the light. <laughs> I find her very comfortable, but also I love the way she sails. She sails very beautiful. She's very comfortable to sail. And she's also very easy for me to single hand. Um, it all comes back to the cockpit. And I can get the sails up and uh, do it all by myself. In the 423, you get an aft cabin, just like the Catalina gives you. But um, the owner's cabin, they're saying, is is probably the V-berth. What do you find? I definitely sleep in the, in the V-berth. Um, it's nice because it has the connected washroom with the shower. So that is that naturally comes to me as being the owner's cabin. There's excellent storage for your clothes in there. There's two drawers underneath the bed. So, and two hanging closets. So for me, I do sleep in the, in the forward cabin. Um, there have been a few times when the weather's been a little bit rough and I will make my way to the back um, because it is nicer to sleep in the back when it's a little more rough. Is there anything about the boat that you don't like or that you would change if you could? So I've changed a few things since I bought the boat. Um, I didn't like the original prop and I changed it. Um, I didn't like the location of the bow thruster. Um, unfortunately, mine came with a bow thruster and the throttle was on my right and the bow thruster was like four feet away on my left. And I got a remote control. So there's so many little things that I was able to just tweak um and make the bow perfect for me did you find anything um i guess factory defective um you know leaky windows port lights that need to be rebedded um anything that was like failing that that beneteau could have done a better job with i know a common concern is and i'll call it a skylight it's a, a three window almost like a skylight over um you know just behind the mast and a lot of people do have leaking problems with them. I haven't had that problem. Um, I think she's always just been really cared for. So it is a bit of a challenge sometimes. I know that you can rebet it, um, but also, you know, she was made in 2007. So if a couple of things are leaking by 2024, I'm not complaining. Does yours have the teak side decks or no? Mine has, no, it does not have teak side decks. Mine has teak on the floor of the cockpit and on the seats, which I love. I love the teak on the floor. You don't see the dirt. Um, and it's a little extra maintenance, but if you have white on the floor, anything that falls on it, it shows. I'm happy not to have the teak side decks. I didn't want too much teak for maintenance. I read that the, the aft head, like the day head was kind of tight, but I figured the, the forward head was all right. It's it's also kind of tight. It's it's still comfortable, but it's it's tight. Uh, even with the shower there, because the forward head has the shower and the, and the head. Um, the kitchen is fabulous. Like the galley, I have a separate fridge and a separate freezer got a three burner stove and a microwave and the layout makes it so easy to work in. And I love the galley on that boat. Um, one of the other changes I made to the boat, very minor, there's a bench in front of the table downstairs. And uh, I removed that. It made the walk space between the entrance and the forward back cabin much more spacious.
And I guess the big question for anybody shopping in this market right now is the Genoa is a twin helm. Yes. So the other two are not. Is that okay with you? It probably is one sacrifice that I did make. And I have a workaround for that as well. Um, the wheel for the 423 is quite large. And I know some people have changed their wheel to be a folding wheel. And that's a great option. I've looked at that. I actually remove my wheel whenever I'm at the dock and I put it on the side rail. Yeah. And for me, that allows for the easy entrance because I stir and load and this boat has fabulous stern loading. So when you come off the stern and you enter the boat, when you remove the uh, wheel, it allows for easy movement throughout the boat. Have you had any problems with the furling system? No, but when I replaced the main sail, um, North Sails recommended that I go batten free. And I said to the salesman, I said, you know, I'm a racer. Or I do like some level of performance on this boat. And he said, yes, but still go batten free. And so that's the way I went. And I think that sometimes it is the battens that may cause some of the problems from what I understand. She points beautifully and she sails beautifully. And uh, I've always enjoyed that about her. Yeah. What's your top speed? You have to remember the boat's full of a lot of things and she's a big boat. So probably close to 10 knots, but I have never really tried to push it. Let us know in the comments what you think of these three boats. The 423 still has that solid wood interior too, so it genuinely doesn't feel like Ikea inside. Would you buy one? Do you have one? Also, Practical Sailor will be in Annapolis soon for the spring boat show. It's like a week away. And looking to tour some real world boats while we're there. If you have a boat that you want to be on camera in one of these videos, send us an email at comments at practical-sailor.com. I would love to come and tour your boat. Also, we're still hiring writers. In our last couple callouts, we got some great people and some really good content, but we still need more expert level people to share their knowledge and experience with other sailors. To apply, follow the instructions at practical-sailor.com forward slash apply. Mm -hmm.